Hey guys, so today's video is a little bit different and I hope you're going to find this interesting. I've gotten a lot of comments about all the power equipment that I seem to buy. So I do buy a lot of used equipment and I've actually had great experience. And through the years of doing this, I've really developed a process of when I buy things, what do I do when I get them home? And I very rarely deviate because the process just works, or at least it works for me. So I'm going to show you the steps, I'm going to show you the item that I purchased today. And I think you'll find this interesting and you'll see this little piece of equipment go from dead to completely functional. and all. All of this only took me about two hours. Today what I was looking for was a greens mower and I was really intrigued by mowing low. It seems like a cool piece of equipment. These things are eight to ten thousand dollars new which is unbelievable considering they only cut 21 inches but if you think they don't sell a lot of these a year and they're a really specialized piece of equipment. So I needed a bargain and I found one on Facebook Marketplace. But if you look at this picture, man this does not look good. It almost looks like a beater and when I first looked at the photo I said forget it. This thing was two hours from my house too. So the person was originally asking close to a thousand dollars. They had lowered the price down to 750 and then ultimately they had it on for 400. I actually wrote them and offered them 300 and they agreed told me right up front that the mower had been sitting for a long time, the mower was the person's father's, and the mower did not run. They believed it needed a spark plug. And usually when someone tells me something like that, that means the machine's either completely dead or they just don't know. So in this case, they were honest about it though, and when I picked the machine up, I did not try to start it. In fact, the only thing I did was I paid the person and I loaded the mower onto my truck. So what you're going to see next is what we did after we got it home. How do you wash these things? Don't use 409, don't use Simple Green. The stuff I'm using right here, and I put this in a steel pump sprayer, but you could use any pump sprayer, is I use Motorcycle Cleaner. And the reason I use Motorcycle Cleaner is because unlike Simple Green and all those other products, Motorcycle Cleaner is rated for paint, chrome, metal, greasy parts, anything that can be exposed on a motorcycle and that also includes belts. You really have to watch if you use the wrong cleaner on one of these machines. You can end up making a belt slip. You can also destroy an electrical connection. So in my experience, motorcycle cleaner is the absolute way to go. So now that I've got it pumped up, all I'm gonna do is spray the machine all over. I really don't cover anything. The only part I've learned over the years that I try to avoid, I don't spray a lot of this on the starting rope or the part that you pull. Just that I found that sometimes that can make it bind up a little bit. But as far as everything else, I just spray all over. Now I'm taking the grass catcher off here because there's no re reason to spray that while it's on the machine. Plus I want to be able to get it into the blade assembly. So I'm coating the machine liberally here. This cleaner is pretty expensive that I use when you think about what it costs per gallon, but I only use a small amount per machine. And even though it still can be expensive, it's a good value for me. And this stuff is really miraculous. All motorcycle cleaners seem to work about the same way. They're usually touchless, so you can just spray them off and hose them down. And you don't need to use a pressure washer. And generally I don't because you can push water into bearings and whatnot. But it, this small step seems like a you know, useless thing. But in reality, wait till you see this machine when it's done. And when that happens, it really gives me the inspiration to go further to really bring this machine back to life this off. The cleaner I use only needs to stay on for about a minute and that's another thing I like about it. It's very quick. So even though it seems like this washing is going on and on, its total time is only about maybe five minutes. So it's well worth the effort. It's important to take your time with this. You really want to rinse all this off. And even as I was doing this, I couldn't believe how much dirt and grime was coming off. And right before my eyes, a lot of the things that I thought were corrosion and grease or maybe um, some sort of debris was just floating right off the machine. So I was very pleasantly surprised. Now I haven't even really finished drying this and whatnot, but take a look at this machine already. It looks fantastic. So that cleaner did a great job getting everything off. And as I said, all that stuff right there that I thought was um, corrosion was actually just dirt and grass clippings. So again, this is not necessary to fix a machine, but I like doing it because it just gets me, it kind of, it's the excitement of working on this machine and it lets me get going. And I really was pleasantly surprised because this machine is so clean with the dirt off it, it really made me realize that this machine had not seen a lot of hours and it had not seen a lot of use. And if you take a look at the blade assembly, it's even pretty good in there. Now it's not sharp and it's not going to cut grass well. But as far as serviceability and making sure we can get this thing back to life, it's looking pretty good so far. 
So now we're going to get down to the mechanics of the machine and get this thing back to life. So the first thing that the owner told me was that he was pretty sure the machine had sat for a long time. So a long time could be two years, five years, 10 years, even 15 years, because they've been making these machines for about 20 years. So one telltale sign for me was when I opened up the gas cap, the gas had a very, very odd smell. It still smelled like gasoline, but it smelled more like shellac or um, maybe like a varnish. And as soon as I smelled that, I knew that was bad news. So that's another reason you don't want to just start a machine like this. You have to be patient. But again, this all took me two hours, so you don't need that much patience. But don't go and pull that start. You're going to cause yourself more troubles. It's better to spend a little bit of time on your investment to really do it the right way. So the first thing we need to do now is to get that gas out of the tank and um, safely and legally get rid of it, of course, but we need to remove it. So when looking at this machine, the easiest way to get this off is going to be to essentially take the fuel line off the carburetor. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to remove the air cleaner and get started. This looks like an operating room. So what I've got going here is I'm just simply removing this fuel line so that I can collect the gas that comes out of the tank. That little blue thing that you see up there is just squeezing the fuel line to keep the fuel from coming out. So now we've got the fuel line off, I'm going to use this container to collect the gas. Alright, so now we've got the gas is all out. I replaced the line, now that all I'm doing is wiping it up here, and I'm going to replace the air cleaner, and I'm going to close this back up. So now we're going to add some fresh gas. This is fresh stabilized gas. I almost always stabilize any fuel that I keep because I just never know how long it'll be around. So we're going to top this up and make sure that we get some good stuff in there and get our machine started off right. But because that gas was so bad, the next thing I want to do is make sure that I drain any of that old fuel out of what's called the carburetor float bowl. That's that little silver um, cylinder right there. Fortunately, there's actually a drain plug on this, and I'm just going to use this towel because it's only going to be a small amount of gas that's going to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this open. Now you should note that I actually have the fuel valve off, and the reason I have it off is because I just really want to get the old gas out, and if I have the valve on and I open this, you're going to get an endless amount of fuel. So take a look at the color there. That's a terrible color for gas, and it stinks that same varnish smell. So I'm going to let this all drain out, and it takes a couple of minutes in this case, but it's a very important step because you don't want to burn this nasty gas. You really want to make sure, if you can, to have all new fuel. So we're going to let this all come out. So the next thing I always do when I buy a machine is I change out the spark plug. So many times people will feel that there's no reason to change a plug and it becomes forgotten. They really are super inexpensive. You're talking about two to three dollars a piece and they're cheap insurance. So what I'm doing here is I have a special spark plug removal um, socket set and I actually have a video on this set because I love it so much. It just works great and it really holds the spark plugs perfectly. So I'm just using a T-handle socket. I'm going to put it on the existing spark plug and we're going to take that out. So I got my spark plug and it's ready to go. So now we're going to install this back in the motor. So the only tip I'll give you here is when you're putting a spark plug back in an engine, you really want to make sure that you very carefully thread it by hand. The reason you do it by hand is because you want to avoid what's called cross threading. And that can happen pretty easily on engines. I've even done it a couple of times over the years. So I've learned from my mistakes and I always hand thread it. I make sure the spark plug feels very smooth going in. If it doesn't, I take it back out and do it again. But this one feels good, so I'm going to use the T-handle, I'm going to put it in. I generally tighten the spark plug about three quarters of a turn um, after it seats. But again, you just want to put it in reasonably tight. You don't want it loose and you certainly do not want it over tightened. So once you put that in, you're just going to replace the um, your spark plug wire and you should be good to go. So one of the things that you need to do is you need to grease any fittings that the machine has. Now this is a commercial piece of equipment, so typically you're going to find grease fittings all over it. And this Toro is no letdown in that respect. There are probably, I think, about 12 fittings on this. So I'm going to go through the machine thoroughly. I'm going to wipe off each fitting to make sure that I'm not pushing any dirt in there. And I'm going to grease all the fittings that I can find. And usually I find a couple later and I'll go back and do them. But for right now, I just want to get the machine up and running. But I don't like to do that without making sure it's thoroughly lubricated. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is change the oil. Now normally you want to change oil when the engine is warm and the oil can flow out freely. But this is an old machine that hasn't been used in a while. So what I want to do is actually drain the oil out without starting the engine. So how am I going to do that? Well I can use the drain bolt that's in the front, but usually those make a mess on machines like this. So I'm going to use a tool that I've actually used in some other videos that I've made. I'm going to use a vacuum pump. For me it works great. It keeps the mess down and it's very, very quick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the filler and I'm going to use my vacuum pump to draw all the old oil out. So now all we need to do to use the vacuum pump is to take that filler out and now we're going to put the tube in and by pumping down I actually create a vacuum. And I don't know if you could see that but the oil is already going into this reservoir. So this is really quick, easy and it makes it great. And if you're really interested in the vacuum pump, Watch my other video on changing lawnmower oil in three minutes. But it actually really only took about a minute and a half, but it sounded so ridiculous. I didn't want to title the video that, but it is such a quick process. This really makes a big difference. Machines like this are a little bit unusual because they tend to work at an angle. So before you fill the machine up, you really need to make sure that the machine is level. So what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up some little items to keep the engine itself level, not the machine. Remember that the engine needs to be level. I cannot tell you how many people fill the amount of oil wrong and it really can damage the motor. So in my case, I'm using some John Deere oil, but all that really matters is the grade of the oil. And if you notice this weird little thing on the top, I don't use funnels at all. I never have. I put these little caps on that you can get at your auto store and these are normally used to fill what they call differentials but they're basically like a built-in funnel and these work really great. Now watch how quick I can fill this oil up. This little tiny adapter on the end is the greatest little thing. So what I do is I put my finger over it to hold the oil from spilling out, put it inside the filler hole and squeeze it. Now like a lot of engines all you need to do is fill this up slowly until the oil comes out and then at that point it's basically filled and you can double check it with your dipstick. But that's what I'm doing right here and I'm going to let it stop as soon as it comes out. Now we're all filled up I'm just going to wipe up a little bit and we're going to replace the dipstick and double check the level and then we're good to go with the oil part. So let's start this up and see if we can bring it to life. One. Two, three, I think my arm's gonna fall off. So this stuff happens. So I realized at this point, and maybe I was doing something wrong. So I took a look and said, you know what? Maybe I don't need the choke, or maybe I do. So don't lose your cool. Just stay calm and stick with it. And look at that. The machine runs, little tiny puff of smoke, which is nothing, and things are looking good. So I'm really excited. This was an old machine. I bet you this sat for at least 10 years, if not longer. And so it made me feel great. The machine's looking good, it's running good, and now I'm going to do a quick demo to make sure that things are good, but everything's working well, and I'm very happy. So again, this is a lawnmower, so you do need to remember a few things. I still didn't sharpen the blade, so if that's what you're thinking, you're absolutely right. So because of what this is, I need to bring this to somebody else to actually sharpen it. Sharpening real blades is not an easy thing to do yourself unless you really know what you're doing, and in this case, I don't. So I don't mind paying for that because now I know the machine's working and that really was what mattered. So I'm still learning about these greens mowers. So what I'm trying out here is make sure the clutch engages, make sure the brake works, and just kind of drive it around to make sure things seem good. But this thing is running great. And that's why I never change from my process because most of the time when I do it this way, Everything works great at the end, and I really think it's just a very thorough way to be with these machines. So I'm making sure things are good here, but it really is looking great. So I hope I've encouraged you to possibly look at used equipment if you haven't in the past, because it really could be a bargain, but you do have to make some effort to make sure that you're going to get a good value. And things go wrong, and it's not the end of the world, but the more things you can try yourself, you can save more, and you can learn a little bit. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like and also subscribe to my channel for more great videos. Thank you so much.